I witnessed, recorded, and produced these videotapes of the Washington, D.C. hearing. Their authenticity is above question. This is produced as part of the ongoing work on the website the way, the truth, and the life dot net. This is a hearing about the government licensing the electrocution of people to cause grand mall seizures. Think of the millions of dollars taxpayers' money spent to pay psychiatrists and their supporters and for the worldwide travel in putting this conference together, while the victims and opponents had to pay their own way. I'd like to give a personal anecdote of my own, which was not known when I was selected to be the chairman of the Department. Well, there's no question in our minds that there are a significant number of patients who have, various, who have had significant side effects and memory deficits associated with ECT. It's also very clear to us from the testimony of other patients that ECT can be tremendously efficacious and helpful to them. And I think that the, if you, it's very difficult for us to use the data for good credit, but that's what the most systematic data is collected. I wouldn't assume that one could translate those numbers to be exactly equivalent in the United States. However, when systematic studies have been done, a varying percentage of patients are positive or very positive about ECT, somewhere varying between 60 and 80 percent. I don't know if that would be found in this country. Nevertheless, there is a, there are significant numbers of patients who have benefited from ECT and have spoke to that point, as well as those who have very bad, bad, bad experiences. So I think to propose a moratorium would be to deprive patients of the therapeutic efficacy. Well, along those lines, how do you react to the vehemence of some of the patients who have been attending these meetings? How would you account for their views? Well, I don't know if I can account, but I can speak to it just very briefly. I think that there are a lot of factors that have, that are involved in why ECT is a very controversial treatment. I think that as many of the patients themselves spoke, I think rather articulately, that many of their concerns relate, of course, to the ECT itself, but to the nature of the process in which they had ECT. And their experiences were that they were never informed of this effects, they were coerced to have ECT, and when they complained they didn't want it, they were told that terrible things would happen to them if they didn't take the ECT treatments. And I think that those factors can certainly help them understand some of their intense feelings. <laughs>
All right, out with your gum. Huh? Out with your gum. All right. It just won't hurt, and it'll be over in just a moment. Uh huh. What's that? Conductor. Oh, dad will do you. All right, Mr. Jackson. Open your mouth. What's that? This will keep you from biting your tongue. Well, now just bite down on it. That's right. Just bite down. Huh? Now bite down on it. Are you ready? Mm -hmm.